Welcome to Magical Women's new series, The Winner's Circle, a series of episodes dedicated to magical women who have been recognized in the industry and awarded for their stellar creativity and performances. Helen Coglin is a remarkable and magical woman. She's followed in her father's footsteps to become a leading escapologist and magician. She holds the honor of being the first woman in the world to successfully survive the Houdini water torture escape broadcast nationally in Australia. In 2018, Helen appeared on season five of Penn and Teller's Fool Us. And with that performance, Helen fooled Penn and Teller. A year later, it's 2019 and season six. Helen is back in Las Vegas filming for a second time, a magic segment. This time it's an escape. And once again, she fools Penn and Teller. Now we're back in 2020, just before the pandemic. And Helen is back in Las Vegas for a third time with another escape. This time from a secured metal box built and inspected by Penn and Teller. And with this magic effect, Helen made history to be the first magician to fool Penn and Teller three times. We are thrilled to have Helen with us here today on Magical Women. Please welcome the truly amazing Helen Coglin. Well, firstly, thank you, Connie, for um, having me and speaking to me. It's really, it's, it's wonderful to um, speak to you in this way. How did your life change after that first win? Did, did it change? Uh, didn't change a lot. Obviously, a lot of um, international recognition because of it. A um, lot of promotion here in Australia as well. Um, I think within about half an hour of it going air to air in America, I got a, um, a, con I got a call from someone, America's Got Talent, wanting to know if I wanted to go on their show, which didn't really appeal to me. I don't have a show or anything to promote. So it was like, nah, nah, thank you anyway. Did you receive any other offers? With the second one, I think people all of a sudden do take a little bit more notice and go, mm, she's fallen twice. She can do magic. She can also do escapes. Mm, okay. How did you choose your material? Did you consciously, did you like evaluate what your repertoire was and, and the first time say, okay, we're going to choose this. And the second one, we're going to do something different. What, what was your, what was your process to choose your, your material? With the first one, because of the glass of milk and it being so different, I knew that would be uh, probably the best thing because as I said, it, it's something different. And I knew they wouldn't know the method because they see with magic, as you know, there are only so many different methods you can do a trick. With this, with the milk trick, it's completely different methods. So I knew it would, it would be visually appear, appealing. And also they wouldn't know the method. So unless they worked out that quickly, I would like to think I would have taken a trophy home, which luckily I did. Um, so that was easy. With the second one, Dad actually had the escape just hanging around in his shed sort of thing. So it was like, oh, yeah, why don't we do that one? Because once again, a really different method. And hopefully, hmm, I wonder if I'd be able to get a second trophy. And then that's when you work with the producers and they had the idea of also, um, because when, when you are escaping, as I said, you're behind a cover, there is a little bit of dead space that you have to fill in. That's when the producer said, hey, is it possible we can have two escapes and lock Teller onto the second? Absolutely fine. Fantastic. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, and also, look, Teller was the, he was the, he's such a good sport for that. He, he was great. Between the first and the second, you actually had an appearance at the Rio in Las Vegas. At that, yes. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yes. If you fool them, you get the opportunity to go back and perform on stage with them. So filming was in March and the live show, I went back in October and performed on stage with them. And it was just, my, I just had a ball with that one. No nerves or anything. It was fun. It was so much fun. I loved it. I got to close the show. So I actually tell everyone that was my best opening act I've ever had. Fabulous. And you're living the dream, you know, it's just. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. It doesn't get much better than that. Doesn't get much better.
There is no name Penn and Teller fear more than this one. Boys, here's Helen Coughlin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I've been on Fool Us twice before, and I've managed to fool Penn and Teller both times. And I think that's one of the beauties with, with me with, with Penn and Teller. They love how basic I am. Real, I mean, honestly, what you see is what you get. I don't take myself too seriously, let alone a performance. And that, I think, comes across with a bit more laid back, perhaps. Um, so with that, with, with my being female, number one, being a little, bit, uh, a little bit more laid back and also having something different is a really good combination. So for everyone, if, if that's a couple of tips I can give everyone, just be unique. When we watch you on television, you seem so composed and so in control and confident. Is that true? Are you just fearless or are you a great actress? I, I think I might hide my nerves a little bit quite well. Um, I get more nervous before a performance rather than the actual performance. Um, with, uh, if I can use Pen and Teller, the first Pen and Teller, for example, when I did that, um, I'd heard of Pen and Teller, I must admit, but I'd never seen Fool Us before. I'd never seen the show. My, my family, great fans of the show. And when I got the opportunity to go on it, they said, you need to watch Pen and Teller to see what it's all about. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do that. So I pulled up a couple of YouTube clips and as I was watching it, these magicians who I saw, and I can't even remember who they were now, but they were fantastic. And honestly, it was like, oh, my God, I can't be on that show. Like, I, I, I didn't put myself in that caliber of, caliber of magician. It was like, I can't do that. And I got really nervous watching it. So I, I didn't watch anymore. It was like, no, I can't watch anymore. So when I did the first pen and teller, although I had a, a few nerves before I went out on stage, because I really didn't have too much of knowledge of the show, I wasn't starstruck by Penn and Teller by any means. So when I walked out on stage, I was really comfortable and I looked around and you see Penn and Teller, I was like, oh, hi. And I saw my family because my family had come from Australia. So I saw them as well and was like, oh, I don't want this to sound cocky or arrogant by any means, but it was like, yeah, I've got this. Yeah, yeah that's fine. I feel comfortable. I feel comfortable. And as I said, I don't mean to, for that to sound arrogant by any means, but I was just, yeah, I'm really comfortable. Let's get on with it. And, and also, um, I suspect that you were well rehearsed and you had worked. Yeah, out oh, absolutely. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well rehearsed. Although the funny thing, the first Penn and Teller, um, one of the tricks or the first trick I ever did on Penn and Teller was a trick with a glass of milk and I put a rod through a glass of milk. Um, a couple of days before had for that during rehearsals the milk kept on um spilling the trick didn't actually work for me so I went in there not a hundred percent confident that it would actually work but when it did it was like wow it worked <laughs> Phew. wow it was wow. so quick I'm glad I didn't blink I'm glad it worked yes <laughs> Now, um, just for the viewers, that that effect, it's, it's a really remarkable, I've never seen an effect like it. It's very interesting. Once again, that is something that dad came up with. And I like the idea of that because it was so simple, so visual, and it's so visually appealing. And honestly, that is the only one of its kind in the world. The thing with the escapes, okay, and this is what gets me every time, with an escape, it is, it's, it's completely different. It's a completely different genre to visual magic. With an escape, you have to be covered by something. Otherwise, people will see how you do it. So, and I always have, have a bit of problem with that idea that you need to be covered, but I, I want it to be more visual. But as I said, escapes just can't be visual. And take, for example, Houdini. Everything he did was was covered like he was covered for everything or he was jumping in you know rivers and things so you couldn't see how he escaped so that's why I like with the milk trick it was so visual and enjoy what you do because that will come across as well if you enjoyed this chat as much as I did and you haven't already subscribed and hit the notifications bell please do so
Oh, and don't forget to comment. We love to hear from you and to receive feedback so we can grow and improve our Magical Women channel and project. Thank <laughs> you.